What's up everybody, Austin here with the Evolving Tank. This week we're going to talk about the top 6 mistakes I've made in my 400 gallon community aquarium. These mistakes are in no particular order, but they are all things I either flat out regret doing or allowing to happen, or at least have second thoughts about. Kicking off the list is only right that I start with what was probably the biggest incident I've had. I killed just about all my fish, including an entire school of Romino's Tetra I had just gotten. It was a pretty devastating thing to happen. It all started after what I thought was a pretty simple water change. Before I knew it, fish started dropping like flies. When I got up the next morning, any fish that weren't already dead were either gasping at the top or sitting on the bottom just trying to pull through. Some of the more bulletproof guppies were the only ones still swimming around. And it wasn't only the fish, a lot of the plants started melting away. They went from healthy to looking like they were rotting right there in the tank. The conclusion I came to is that all this may have been caused by the water hose I used. I think something in the lighting on the interior of the hose leached into the water as I refilled the aquarium. I ended up having to do a couple more big water changes to get whatever was contaminating the water out. It was a hard lesson, but I kept on going. Second, we have the disaster that got me in the most trouble with the wife. One morning, I looked at the tank and my heart dropped when I saw how low the water level was. Then, as I walked closer, I felt the wet carpet. Of course, my initial thought was that the tank had a leak, but this one was actually caused by a hose on my FX6 coming loose and spraying water everywhere. So the good news about this situation is all the fish were okay, but the bad news I was going to have to completely drain the tank, remove all the fish and hardscape, move the tank, and have the carpet professionally clean. A huge headache. And you could bet I made sure all the hoses on my FX6 were nice and tight from then on. Third on the list, something I don't believe I've talked about at all on the channel yet, but it has to do with the root tabs I was using for a while. A few months ago I found these root tabs on Amazon, they seemed like a great deal, and they were something new to try. They're capsules with Osmocote Plus in them. And it was easy enough putting a bunch of them in the substrate for the plants. The problem started the next day when the little balls of Osmocote in each capsule started finding their way to the surface. At first it was just a few of them, but it became more and more and more. Now, anytime I clean the tank till this day, I have to spend time trying to pick each and every one of them out of the aquarium. And if that's not bad enough, more will be back the next day. It has now literally been months since I added the last one of those capsules into the aquarium and they still pop up regularly. Not only does having all these yellow balls popping up in the aquarium all the time look terrible, but I wouldn't be surprised if having them sitting on top of the substrate when they're releasing their fertilizer instead of deep in the substrate where it gets right to the plant's roots could contribute to a little more algae in the aquarium. And there's also the fact that with the army of Malaysian trumpet snails that are in here now, the substrate is constantly being churned, and that's bringing some of them to the top as well. Which brings us to our fourth mistake. I let my Malaysian trumpet snail population get way out of control. Just like everyone else that has them, it started when I first got the tank, and some plants that I added must have had a few hitchhikers on them. And I was okay with that. I know the snails can help eat food that the fish have missed. They can also help control algae and help turn over the substrate. But when there's what feels like thousands of them in here, they just aren't as welcome anymore. And their populations can really explode quickly. And yes, I know this is my fault for letting it get to this point. I'm 100% sure this happened because I feed heavily to make sure everybody gets their fair share to eat. Again, definitely my fault. But now they've gotten out of control. And I don't want to stop feeding like I currently do, but I do need to thin out their numbers a little bit. Removing them manually would be a headache in a tank this big. The problem with using fish to eat them, like a loach or a puffer fish, is that they'll eat the shrimp as well. So what I settled on to help in this situation was assassin snails. I already had one in the tank, but I added more a while ago and I already spotted what looks like one of their babies in the aquarium. So I'm hoping they'll be able to help thin out the herd a little bit down the line, although I know it would take a while, but we'll just see what happens. Fifth, we'll talk about a mistake I made a whole video about before. The fact that I was not quarantining any of my fish before I added them to the aquarium. And I was doing this for quite a while, I was thinking I was getting away with it, 
and I was adding them straight to the aquarium, whether I got them from a local store I trust or I just ordered them online. And the truth is, even though I thought I was getting away with it, any of the fish I added could have had internal parasites and been spreading them to all the other fish without me even realizing it. But what scared me straight when it comes to quarantining my fish was when my Congo Tetra got ick. Luckily what I chose to treat with, ICX, is available in large amounts for a reasonable price, but if this had turned out to be a more serious disease that I had spread into a 400 gallon aquarium, that could have very easily gotten very expensive to treat. So now, I quarantine. Why subject the fish to possible disease for no reason when all quarantining takes is some patience and a few medications, especially when it can prevent a much bigger issue further down the line. The sixth and final thing we'll speak about today is that some of the fish and shrimp I've chosen to be in my aquarium do limit my choices for fish I may want to include in the future. The biggest offenders with this one are the glow light danios, the amano shrimp, and the bamboo shrimp. And it's not like I want monster fish or anything, but there are a lot of fish I would love to add that would look at any of the small fish or shrimp in the tank as a snack. And I don't have any plans to remove any of them from the tank, I love them all. But when I sit down and think of other fish I may want to add to the aquarium and I end up having to eliminate them because of somebody that's already in the tank, those are the main culprits. And I'm just working around that right now, choosing species that should get along with them relatively well. But in the future when it's time for the evolving tank to evolve, I'll for sure keep the species I'm selecting in mind from the very beginning to avoid limiting myself. And there are some of those fish that are risky to add, but I think it may be possible. And I'm tempted to still try them, especially if I can't find much information online saying that it for sure won't work. But is that being irresponsible or is that just science? Let me know what you think down in the comments. But that's all I have for you today. Please consider subscribing if you're interested in following in the future of the evolving tank. I'll see you all next time.